Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I'm going to test out my model of the Soviet Lunar Sample Return Mission. Uh, it failed on Luna 15 but was successful on Luna 16, 20, and 24. I basically had to make it because the Mission Profile series will not progress without it. Uh, we have to do Luna 15 next. It failed, however it is significant because it was trying to beat Apollo 11 in getting a sample back from the moon. Uh, it ended up crashing into the moon and the Apollo 11 crew was concerned about what exactly it was doing because the nature of Luna 15 was top secret. Uh, so yeah, uh, I get to tell that story in the mission profile series, but first I have to have a model of it. And if you take a good look at it, you'll see why maybe there isn't a particularly good model of it right now so far yet. Uh, it is complicated. It's got these tanks that are so con you know, sort of connected like that. It's got stuff sticking out. It's got, uh, this thing has antennae, so deploy antennae. Uh, this part has the arm here to get the sample. It, uh, it's not actually functional right now. It would be a drill basically to drill for a sample and then pop it into the return capsule there. Uh, speaking of things that are complicated that have to be tested. Um, there are all these little vernier thrusters. I've configured those as RCS for now. I'll, I may or may not reconsider that, uh, depending on whether I feel like we need them to be gimbling or not. And uh, there are other engines here, including two vernier thrusters there. The RCS thruster configuration is complicated. Uh, for instance, these over here are the pitch thrusters. Uh, they extend out like that. It's weird. Uh, and I'm not entirely sure I'm not missing some RCS thrusters uh, because the diagrams, first of all, are all different and uh, it's hard to tell where things are supposed to be and whether I've got things right or not. These are drop tanks. They drop off. So that's another fascinating little aspect of this. Uh, those will drop off first. And of course the landing legs had to be done. And those pose a whole other problem because even though I've scaled this down a bit, uh, when I was making the model, I scaled it based on the capsule. I got a size for the capsule. It was uh, 50 centimeters in diameter, okay. And then I got uh, images to work with that seemed isometric. And I built everything else. And it doesn't fit in the fairing, basically. Uh, now, it could fit in the fairing if we had something... Oh, this wide. I've already scaled it down a bit, by the way, but uh, it's not just landing legs. The, those drop tanks get into some trouble. You can sort of, I mean, they really packed it in tight. And incidentally, we have to move this decoupler down. This is Raider Nix, uh, Proton Rocket plus the Block D, which is necessary to send it to the moon. Uh, but yeah, if it was this diameter, we'd be in better shape. But since it's this diameter, Oh, we are not. And worse, the only fairings I could find that could, that seem to be workable are these Zon fairings. Um, they, you, well, you can see the problem. So, I mean, I definitely put colliders on the foot pads and the drop tanks. It's at 95% right now, 95% scale from what I originally had it at. And maybe it's smaller, I don't know. Uh, I was just going off images and they could be wrong. Uh, so yeah, that's one thing to test. Whether any of the engines work has to be tested. I have to verify that and yeah, I basically have not tested this outside. It took a long time to get it to this point uh, and uh, I have to get the fuels right and the mass right and all that business. I think I've got a good, good facsimile of it here. But it's sort of sticking out. Let's see. Let's see how it goes. Oh, I guess this is a Zon fairing, so I should have... I mean, that's the problem. I don't have a good fairing for this. Let me bring it back in. Maybe we shouldn't use that fairing. It's got a hole on the top. It has a launch escape system. But I don't think any other fairing is particularly great either. They basically made custom fairings for each payload, as far as I can tell. Well, I guess at least we can see whether it explodes immediately on the pad because of the clipping. It shouldn't, of course. But it could glitch out somewhat. Okay, looks like it doesn't immediately explode. 
So we have this fairing here. This is for the proton. This is the original proton probe that the proton rocket is named after. However, I use that. Um, it's meant for this size. It's not meant for this size because that did not launch with a bridge stage. Uh, not a bridge stage, a block D stage. So I think maybe I'll just make a custom upper. Maybe that's for the best. It's sort of sacrilegious since Raider Nick made every possible fairing for Proton, or at least it seems that way. A little bit of foot pad clipping there. Uh, at least it's not poking out. Okay, so we'll have to use a custom fairing, but I think that will work better. Let's take it outside. Okay, it is a nighttime launch. Carl up, SAS is on, ignition. And launch. Okay, we're past the speed of sound. Okay, hot stage ignition. And staging. Okay, I think we'll try and deploy the fairings. Well, that looks like they're off cleanly. No problems with the foot pads or anything. Oh, I think I forgot the block deep verniers. Still got the RCS on it, but it's supposed to have two verniers. I forgot about those. Hmm. I just noticed that I don't have the electric charge that I thought I was gonna have. Oh, somehow the descent stage our, uh, electric charge got eliminated. <laughs> okay, uh, I must have accidentally done that in the RO config for it. I'll have to fix that. Okay, vernier ignition. And I was supposed to hot stage. Oh well. I was supposed to hot stage the verniers on third stage. Okay, we are about to make orbit here. No problems so far. And shut down. Alright, stage separation. I wonder if that gets deorbited like that. Uh. Yep, actually those retro thrusters deorbit it, basically. So that's nice. Our off-plane transfer can hit it right there. So that's ideal. Okay, well there's a good moon periapsis of 109 kilometers. It did get into orbit first, before trying to land. And Block D has seven ignitions in this case. I did pick the right one for the uh, right time frame, so. We do have electric charge consumption though. And I accidentally left out the electric charge off of the descent stage, so that's going to be a problem. I've already edited the configuration to fix that, but of course I would have to reload the game to bring that in. And I want to test as much as possible first. Okay, selling fuel down and ignition. I don't know if block D was supposed to bring it into orbit or whether the lander brought it into orbit, it brought itself into orbit. Either way could work. Uh, it looks like we have enough delta V in block D to do it. The lander just has battery power as far as I know. It doesn't have any solar panels or fuel cell or anything like that. So that'll activate the bottom engines and then we have the two drop tanks that we will jettison. Oh, I should make sure to make the fuel priority. Uh, here right now the fuel priority is on the descent stage. We want that to be later than the drop tanks. I'll have to do that in the VAB. The engines on the descent stage do throttle the main engine as well as the verniers. Uh, I'm not too sure. They say that uh, it runs on just the verniers for landing, but I swear it doesn't have enough thrust to do that, but I'm not sure. 
It depends on whether the thrust they sighted was as a pair or individually. Oh, okay. A little bit far. We have our CS here. And we're not jettisoning the stage, so we're not going to have issues like that. Ah! It's hiding the truth from us. I'm pretty sure we still have an encounter like that, but... Well, let's see. Oh, but we've got electric charge. Okay, so for test purposes, we are going to um, do the electric charge cheat. Otherwise, we're going to have trouble. This got boil off on the block D stage, but I think we'll still have enough to capture into orbit just fine. Okay, well, let's bring the moon periapsis in a bit. Okay, here we go. It's possible that the lander can do this on its own. Oh, this light is looking a little bit greenish. Okay, well, let us jettison that. Okay, we are now active. Yeah, it's it's greener than I thought it was. I made it a little bit green, but I didn't think it was this green. Okay, deploy legs. We can't actually sell the fuel down. We don't have any downward facing ones. I might have to turn off Ullage on these particular engines. They're actually turbo pump fed, but they have all sorts of problems here. I'm just gonna go straight into a landing. Uh, looks like, I, I don't know, I, I can't really tell if the plumes are in the right place. I think I might need to move them down. No, I don't know, it's tough. To fire them separately instead of together inside there. Okay, wait. Uh, fuel priority is still messed up. Whoops. I thought 6 was lower than 10. <laughs> okay, now it's draining from the drop tanks. So this KTDU-417B is the Verniers, and this one is the main engine. There was a Venera engine that seems similar, and so I based the 50 ignitions on that because there's a engine configuration in Realism Overhaul for that Venera engine, which is also a KTDU. Uh, I'm not sure how many ignitions these would have. You don't need that many for landing on the moon. Especially since they throttle. But yeah, the thrust of the one I looked at for Venera had the same thrust and same throttling. Now, uh, that unfortunately, one source I used for this stuff is Encyclopedia Astronautica, which is probably wrong, but um, it said that the Vernier is only at a specific impulse of 254, so that's a downside. I don't know if that's right or not. The main engine has 314. Okay, drop tank jettison. Well, that works. We do have other things to fix, but... Not horrific so far. This is too much fuel. It must have captured into orbit first, or maybe I need to reduce the amount of fuel. It's a little bit questionable how much propellant it has. Um, NASA said that the unfueled mass of this thing is 1.88 tons and fueled it's between 5.6 tons and 5.75 tons. Uh, yeah, I have some questions about that. <laughs> so we have we have a lot of fuel. Now it might actually be reading this fuel as, let me see if I lock that. Oh, it doesn't seem to have any effect though. Uh, let me temporarily shut off the main engine to see what kind of thrust weight ratio we get from the verniers alone. Full tilt. 
Uh, I don't think they're that great. Yeah, only half of moon gravity. So yeah, I don't know about the whole using the verniers during uh, the final phase of the landing. Maybe if we had burned off the fuel for capturing into orbit as well. And we had less fuel altogether, I don't know. Oh, we had more verniers? Maybe there's... But I think that it's only two chambers. Maybe if uh, each chamber of the vernier thruster is, well, at most 3.4 kilonewtons, then it would work out. But this bus wasn't just meant to carry this, it uh, had other jobs, like it will also be used for bringing rovers down on different missions. So it could be overpowered for this particular purpose, I'm not sure. But then they would just make a bigger ascent stage, wouldn't they? Not sure. Uh-oh. I may have to do a number of ignitions. Oop. Okay, well, we, we stuck down there. Alright, I'm gonna lock this fuel. So it looks like we had 1,200 left, which I think is like capturing into lunar orbit kind of amounts. Alright, we're gonna shut that off. And let's retract that arm for now, for the purposes of launching this. And... If we were going to launch directly to Earth, we need to be on in the right location because I think they said that it was just a single single burn kind of thing. Oh, this location will never get there. <laughs> uh, right. We'd have to launch uh, land in a particular place to be able to get back to Earth. We'd have to land, well, pretty much right here. <laughs> Then we can launch directly into a return to Earth place, but landing over there is no good. So we have a particular required landing location for that kind of thing. But let's check whether I can launch off of this at all. It has the right amount of delta V. At least uh, NASA said 2,600 to 2,700 meters per second. We have 2,664 in the ascent stage. All right. Well, I brought you guys. All right, and launch. Off it goes. It's got way too much thrust to weight ratio though. And oh, is the RCS not working? Oops. Let's get the RCS working. The vernier thrusters act like RCS unless I think that that's not a good idea. So far, this has eight ignitions. I mean, it could have the same 50. I mean, it's basically the same engine. It uh, just has the throttle. I don't think it throttles. It could do with some throttling, frankly. Maybe it does throttle. I don't know, but they didn't say it throttled. They did say it was supposed to burn for 53 seconds. So it has 53 seconds of burn time, and it does get the required delta V in that time. And the stage... Well, it's about the right mass, so all is well. The question is whether it can reignite it all. I, I gather that it was supposed to burn direct. But, you know, since we're in the wrong place, maybe we should adjust for that and just take advantage of the fact that I put many ignitions on it. Oh, we can't. Uh, we actually don't have enough delta V right now because I didn't... Wow, only uh, 715 left. I really didn't do a very good job. Anyway, well, as expected, this isn't going to work out for us. We need about 800 to get back home. Yeah, well, 700 something anyway. So yeah, we are stranded here this time. But as far as first tests go, that wasn't too bad. Of course, we had to do the infinite electricity thing. We'll have to fix that. I don't know how much electric charge draw it actually had, but it's currently 100 watts. Well, I should check the decoupling of the capsule while we're here. So here we go. Yes, it can decouple. So that's okay. They said it was 39 kilograms. 
It only carried about like 100 grams of material, so whether you have some material in it or not isn't going to change the mass of it too much. Right now it's got the command core just for convenience sake. It needs a parachute too, so I should probably reduce the mass of it so that we could put a parachute on. Probably just a drogue chute. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, so I need to think about that, but at least... Yeah, I don't know if 9 ablator is enough. There's a lot of questions here. But I'll have to retest this with uh, some fixes and we'll see how it goes. But yeah, well that was the first test of the Luna 15 slash 16 slash 20 slash 24 thing. And uh, eventually once I've fixed it all up, I'll release it. But for now, with this being the situation, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.